Hey, what's going on gamers? It appears it's already 20th video where I talk about my experiences and the progress that I made while developing my very own NES game. If you want to just check the game out, you can grab the latest ROM from the links that you can find in this video's description. So I'm gonna be completely honest here. After putting out my last video, I did not have a solid plan what to do next. The only thing that was clear that I need to expand the game by adding more content. So the ROM would no longer be half full. I don't think there's a finished NES game in existence that has such huge empty chunks of memory as in my game. Of course adding just random stuff because you have to is a obviously a recipe for a disaster. So I had to spend some time to just think things through and plan my next moves. I usually make my task list on some random sheets of paper or on some old notebook like this. But as you see it gets messy quickly and I sometimes even lose those pieces of paper. So this time I created a digital document where I managed to compile a smallish list of tasks that I should do next. I also printed it out because it is quite satisfying to cross out completed tasks with a pen. So the first thing from that task list I did was to inform the player what item is equipped. One of you suggested that it might be good to show equipped tool above the head of the player character, like in Harvest Moon. I thought that too, but on second thought it did not fit my game well. Because in Harvest Moon you don't run around fighting things. You are completely safe to show off what tool you have equipped. In my case imagine that you are running from the horde of angry monsters. And you stop for a second to show off that spear that you just equipped. So instead of that I decided to show equipped item in the status bar using two sprites. Since I started messing with the status bar, how about improving the daytime indicator? For some reason this indicator up until now used sprites. Not sure why, maybe I planned to do some animations, but I never did. So since now I'm using sprites to display the equipped tool, I decided to replace the sprites in the daytime indicator with background tiles. I made the celestial bodies a bit bigger and now they even have different colors. So in total now the status bar is using 4 sprites. The sprite 0 keeps this bar in place when the map scrolls. 2 sprites are for the equipped item and the last one is at the end of the stamina progress bar. So I still have 60 sprites available for my game characters and various items. Unfortunately there was an issue that became more apparent when I started updating those background tiles in the daytime indicator. The main problem was that I was writing to the PPU way too frequently and way too much during the NMI. Especially when I even didn't have to. And that created random glitches. Let's look for instance what happens when Mario stands still. Yep, exactly nothing. The same behavior is common throughout most of the popular titles. Meanwhile in my game I keep writing those same column tile values to the name table over and over. And that's bad. So I finally started implementing checks if I actually need to update that particular tile column in the map. The same thing for the color attributes as well, especially since the attributes don't have to be updated that frequently. There still might be some occasional glitches, but I hope I will eradicate them as the time goes. So how about that content expansion you might ask? For starters I added a new room in the alien base and it's meant for none other than a huge and scary boss. Like come on, what's some NES game without a boss? Of course they weren't that common in the early arcade ports, but even the Super Mario Brothers has Bowser. Since I mainly played later NES titles while growing up, for me 
a huge boss at the end of the game is very important feature and must have in every NES title. But for the moment I just added a tiny werewolf as a placeholder to run around in this room. Notice the boss room has this dark area below. Hopefully you will find out what's it for in the future. I decided to leave the door open to the boss room at all times. Maybe for some reason the player might decide not to fight the boss. You can leave anytime you want. But once you leave and return back, the boss health points will be refilled. But instead I closed off the corridor in the base that leads to the crash set. So you can't go there if you haven't defeated the boss. I used the destructible tile feature for this door. It was great because you could only destroy a particular type of tiles with your super hammer. So I was pretty sure that if I use some other tiles, you won't be able to break them. After the boss is defeated, I set the flags for those door tiles to destroy it, and the door should open up. Unfortunately, there were some instances where the door opened in completely different name table or it created some kind of impassable invisible blocks. So it was clear that the destructible tile system wasn't perfect and I needed to put some work into it. So I improved collision detection for the destructible tiles, added a screen check for every tile, and I think the system is way better now. But of course it's still not perfect. Next I decided to remove the blockade at the end of the cave since you have the locked door in the base. Also this makes the super hammer no longer needed but I haven't removed it from the game entirely. As one of you guys suggested I decided to make a part of the cave completely dark. I simply divided the existing cave into two parts. One is the regular one and the second one is the dark cave. The problem here was that the dark cave wasn't that dark after all and I had no clue how to make it completely pitch black. I started looking at the code that changes the palette when the time passes. I needed to somehow change the palette for the characters as well, but this piece of code didn't do that. So the solution might be kind of tricky. Plus I did not have much space for a lot of code in the main bank. What should I do? Fortunately, I didn't need to do much. Looks like I already had a feature to load custom palettes for my maps. I developed this feature to have a different palette for the alien base. All I needed to do was to load a palette that's filled with all black when you enter the dark cave. That's it. Of course, it wasn't possible to keep the status bar background color dark blue. Because if you change the first color for the first palette, it changes it for all of them. Okay, so we have a pitch black cave that's filled with werewolves. Now how I can possibly cross it without getting stuck or dying of course. Well, <laughs> I could use the immortality cheat code. Once the food and warmth points run out, the outlines of the map would start blinking red. And this way I would be able to see the environment. Of course the more realistic option would be to get a light source from the villagers. Like this lamp. Not sure if it actually looks like lamp but that's the best thing that I could fit into 16 by 8 pixels. So yeah basically now you get it instead of the hammer. So when you enter the dark cave the game checks your inventory and if it finds that lamp then the all black palette is not loaded so you can actually see where to go. Also the letter in the cave now mentions the lamp. So I started testing the game and I've noticed that it's very easy to defeat the boss with just a single spear. That was actually weird because it should not have been possible since the boss had at that moment 50 health points and the spear should made about 9 points damage. So what the heck. Apparently there was a bug that made the spear overpowered. It kept dealing damage in every frame. If it collided with a character it had more HP than the damage itself. So it didn't matter how 
many HP the enemy would have, the spear would kill it eventually. So I needed to fix that. Now the spear simply vanishes if that enemy had more HP than the damage from a single spear hit. So okay, now we have the dark cave and even the boss. But one thing is still missing. The boss is not unique and most definitely it's not big. Actually up until now all the NPCs in the game could not be wider than two sprites. So I had to put some work to fix that. Now in the NPC data I can specify the width and height of every character in sprites. So how big my boss should be? My first attempt was to make the boss 3 by 5 sprites large. But for starters I did not draw any graphics, I just wanted to display a very basic rectangle. Soon I faced a problem that I can't simply reach certain frames with my 8-bit index. With the bunny graphics being just 2x2 two two sprites, I could easily store the pointer to a first frame and then using my index table I could reach every frame I want. But for the character that's bigger I could no longer use those indexes because the distance in bytes from the first frame to the last one was much greater than the maximum 8-bit number. So instead of using indexes for each keyframe, I started storing pointers for the data. This not only let me to have greater data ranges, but also I could reuse the existing keyframes and delete repeating data. For instance, I don't really need to have different death frames for every direction. So now I can reuse the single frame data by using the pointer instead of repeating the data four times. Since I no longer have restrictions on the data, I decided to make the boss a little bit bigger. I thought it would be difficult to make the boss symmetrical and reuse those tiles if it would remain uh, three tiles wide. So why not to make it four tiles wide instead? So it was finally time to start drawing the boss. I started from the frame that faces forward and drew a frame for each direction, plus an attack frame. The new problem was that I could not simply add walk animations. Basically I used up all the tiles in the alien beast tile set and there were no free space to add something else. I guess I would have had less problems if I made just a side scroller. But since now I need to have frames for the characters facing up, down and horizontal directions, I need way more tiles. I figured I could reuse some tiles from the attack frames and stitch together something that looks like walking. It's not gonna look amazing, but I think it's still better than the character just sliding around. Now look at him running. The screen tools meta sprite feature was perfect to create those animation frames. Even though I don't use the binary meta sprite format in my game, I still saved my boss frames in it. I can easily copy and paste assembly data from each frame. Also one more thing, perhaps for the future, I need to hide sprites that have empty tile value. I have several sprites like that in some frames. So yeah, the boss ended up being not that huge. I think in order to have a much bigger one, I would need either to make it less mobile and use background tiles instead of sprites, or to be ready to experience a ton of flickering, which I don't like. Also, I had a big issue with the boss's collision. To be exact, the boss had these blind spots where he could not make any damage to the player. When I started investigating, I found out that there were a bunch of magic numbers in the collision detection code. Looks like I've adapted the code for the previous characters that were much smaller. So this code wasn't working that well with the larger boss. So I had to go through the code and in most cases to remove the number 16 which was used for the character width and height. In some cases there were numbers like 12 or 24. I had no idea what was I thinking at that moment. That's why you should never leave so called magic numbers in your code. It's always better to put a constant with a meaningful name instead. But I guess I get lazy sometimes. 
Finally we can have a proper fight with the boss. Not gonna guarantee it will be an easy one, but I kinda doubt any of you will ever get to it. And to make the boss fight even harder, I composed this super annoying song that starts playing when you enter the boss room. So yeah, that's pretty much all the changes for now. If you're curious what's gonna happen next, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. So thanks for watching till the end, and I will see you next time. Bye.